the burial of Lord Byron. With the tap of knife to glass, his grace rose, clutching the letter, spoke in disbelief to the silent ceremonial dinner of the beaver hunt. Grave news, gentlemen. Lord Byron has died in Greece. An audible gasp descended into deeper silence, held until a disembodied voice behind the flicker of candelabra spoke. I stood in Venice on the Bridge of Sighs. Darkness concealed who responded, a palace and a prison on each hand. Fox, hunter and hound forgotten, squires repeated singly and in groups, lines in eulogy for the dead poet. Leaving the ancestral hall, some glanced skywards, seeking a new bright-tailed comet to reflect their newly mapped constellation of the literary dead. Sails flapped and cracked on mast and spar, bellied out to whistles, orders, rope shanties, as the Florida beat upstream from Gravesend. Hobhouse, thinly filmed in spray, leaned his forehead on the flag-draped coffin as paroxysms of grief racked his body. No more to the pugilistic arts at Gentleman Jim's. No more to the gaming or the gin parlours in dandy black coat and dun breeches with jewelled stock, silver top stick to circle and stab, emphasised each exuberant flight of fancy. No more ribald cuts at countess or courtesan, or sub voce comment to the select few on boys. How exemplary chastity at home was to give way in hard beds with sharp insects to a profligate desire. Corinth, Delphi, Thebes, Athens and Constantinople, the whole divan replete, almonds and sugared sherbet, fruit and sweetmeats from a remorseless tyrant who roasted, massacred, impaled opponents, exemplified the Orient. Greece in her age of woe first glimpsed in subjugation from snow-bound passes of Albania. Annabella divined me contagions linked to past profligacy. You showed her that fair lock of choir boy hair, presumed female, made comparisons swimming with brandy and laudanum through regions of ice humour, pistols loaded at bedside. I am surely in hell. That taper burning red through curtained marriage bed, black moods, a raging storm, Breaking and burning, severed all connections except half-sister Augusta, soft, gentle, supportive, though incestuous. Annabella found your desire. Now the logic of her mathematical brain cut exactly to the equation. Your craid returned to that region of unrestricted desires. Virtue risked, marriage an experiment in abuse. She took the infant daughter, silently crossed the threshold of your room where the hound slept, left you blasted as Satan. Hobhouse, thin, the last to shake hands on English soil with Byron, pursued by bailiffs dreading social death, recalled his cap waved from the stern as the Dover packet, released from its moorings, bounded off with full sails on a curling wave from the pier head, the unpaid-for Napoleonic coach lashed to, to the decks. A reverie disturbed by Lyon, Byron's Newfoundland dog, skittering about the deck, now laying its head at his feet.